If you have access to the internet, you also have access to all the world's information at your fingertips. So with that in mind, you'd think that you would know about any hidden ingredients tucked secretly away in your favorite foods. But advertisers do everything they can to keep these things a secret, and often hide behind confusing terms or vague statements like natural coloring. We'll show you some everyday products with shocking ingredients. Oh, why hey there folks! Do you love watching our videos, but are you looking for a more ad-free browsing experience? Take your video viewing to the next level and sign up for the Premium Network. You'll get the first peek at the newest content from not only the richest, but Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many more. Thousands of your favorite videos in one place is a no-brainer. Click here to be the first in line for the Premium. Did you know that The Richest contains 100% of your daily recommended dose of entertainment? To make sure you don't forget to take yours, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Eggs When you're on the go and in a rush, sometimes grabbing a delicious breakfast sandwich can seem like a no-brainer. They're usually made of meat, egg, and cheese on some type of bread, and they're so simple it's hard to imagine something unknown could be lurking in them. But there are more than a few hidden ingredients hiding right in the egg portion of your fast food sandwich. For example, Subway contains a premium egg blend that, among other things, contains propylene glycol, which is used for flavoring or to lubricate air conditioner compressors and keep deodorant sticks nice and slick. It also contains calcium silicate, which is used as an antacid or as a sealant on roads, roofs, and concrete. Glycerin is used as a solvent and is commonly found in soap and moisturizers and also in your Subway breakfast sandwich. McDonald's uses cottonseed oil in its eggs, which is composed of 94% saturated fat. That's especially disheartening as eggs are frequently touted as a healthy breakfast item. Chick-fil-A uses palm kernel oil in its eggs, which is 50% saturated fat. Not quite as bad as McDonald's, but still less than ideal. Antifreeze Compound We all know that antifreeze is toxic, however many items you eat and drink every day may contain a compound that is used in antifreeze. When Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey was pulled off shelves because it contained over the allotted amount of this ingredient, it made us realize that there is actually an amount of this that is allowed. It's used as a solvent and is used not only in antifreeze but in the liquid used in e-cigarettes. It's called propylene glycol and is considered safe in small quantities but fatal in large doses. The scary thing is it's way more common than you think. It's even in that refreshing cup of iced tea you get from your local Dunkin' Donuts. It's used to make the flavoring taste sweeter, so stick to the unflavored type. It's also found in many types of ice cream, including the type served at Cold Stone Creamery. If you decide to make your dessert at home just to be safe, you'll want to avoid many types of boxed cake mix and prepackaged frostings. Try to avoid it by being healthy, and you'll want to read the label of your salad dressing extra carefully, as many dressings utilize this ingredient. Flies for many of us, pasta is the ultimate comfort food. Unless you're making it yourself, it's likely that there are some rather unpleasant ingredients lurking inside of your favorite pasta sauce. While you might agonize over whether to go for a tomato-based sauce or a creamy alfredo, you may want to think about how many fly eggs are in there. That's right, the FDA allows sauces to contain 30 fly eggs per 100 grams of sauce. If that isn't bad enough, it can also contain one maggot per 100 grams. We aren't sure what the exact conversion rate is between fly eggs and maggots on the disgustingness scale, but the thought of eating either is horrifying. Why have you never heard of someone finding a maggot in their pasta while out at a nice restaurant? Because it's unlikely you'd ever notice such a trace amount. Just think of it as a nice source of protein, conveniently tucked away in the sauce just for you. And if you're not picking your tomatoes to make your own sauce, you should know that it's perfectly acceptable for there to be fly eggs and maggots in your canned tomatoes as well. Preservatives Okay, so we know that the vast majority of the food we eat today is loaded with preservatives. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, as preservatives allow us to access food that grows far away from where we are, without risking eating something that's spoiled. 
However, some fast food places use so many preservatives that it starts to seem a little excessive. One company that is notorious for this is McDonald's. This fast food giant's food holds up notoriously well over long periods of time, and while they're quick to claim that their burgers are made of 100% beef and are preservative-free, they don't mention anything about their french fries, burger buns, or cheese. And not all preservatives are scary chemicals. For instance, McDonald's infamous french fries are simply loaded with fat. In a single order of fries, about 50% of the calories come from fat. Because there's so much fat, there isn't as much moisture, meaning there is less room for mold to grow. This coupled with all the salt on them keeps their fries looking fine for years after most other fries would be a moldy mess. Their burgers are about 37 to 54 percent fat, and that coupled with their thin size and high moisture content keep them looking good for longer than most other burgers would. Silicon Dioxide Few things are better on a chilly day than a hearty bowl of chili. However, if you're thinking about grabbing a bowl of chili at a fast food place, you might want to think again. That delicious meaty bowl topped with cheese is filled with silicon dioxide. It's also known as silica and is used as an anti-caking agent, which means that it makes your chili appear to be fresh way longer than it should. Because of the silicon dioxide, your chili won't clump together and dry out, even if it's left sitting on the warmer for far longer than it really should be. If you're well versed in chemistry, you've likely figured out that this compound is naturally occurring and is made of silicon and oxygen. In fact, it's so natural that it's commonly found in rocks and sand. Delicious, delicious sand. So not only could you potentially be eating chili that's way older than you think, but it's chock full of rock dust. And it's not just found in chili either. It's also used in beer, wine, and various juices. This hidden ingredient keeps your favorite beverage flowing smoothly. Okay, you can take a quick snack break because it's time for our trivia question. We know that french fries are cut up potatoes fried in oil, and that's not exactly healthy. But what fast food giant caused a controversy when people found out their french fries contained meat? Keep watching for the answer. L-cysteine if you've never heard of L-cysteine, you're not alone. If you're searching for it on your food label, it might be listed as E920 or dough conditioner. It's a food additive that is used in dough, meaning it's likely to be found in your next sandwich or slice of pizza. It keeps the dough strong and moist, allowing it to be stretched out farther without tearing. When it's used to make bread, it helps to keep the bread looking and tasting fresh longer than it normally would. There are two methods of making it, and we can't decide which way is worse, the one involving duck feathers or the one involving human hair. Okay, the hair one is definitely worse, and horrifyingly enough, it's more common. Both the hair and feathers generally come from China where they are processed and the amino acid L-cysteine is extracted via a chemical process. So we feed ducks bread and then the feathers from the duck are ground up to make our bread, the circle of life. Oh, and it's lurking in other baked goods as well, including many of your favorite fast food pies and cinnamon rolls. Tartrazine. While many of the ingredients mentioned in this video may make you feel a little bit queasy, for the most part they are generally thought to be harmless. However, we're going to talk about a chemical known as tartrazine, also known as yellow number five. It's an incredibly common coloring, and even if you're not eating or drinking something that's yellow, it can be mixed with other dyes to make different colors. Looking at the label isn't particularly helpful for finding it either, as it's often just listed as coloring. It's found in just about everything from ice cream to corn chips, and it's in some of your favorite beverages such as Mountain Dew and Kool-Aid. In 2010, a memo issued by the FDA acknowledged that data suggests tartrazine may be triggering for people with ADHD and similar issues. In other countries, this ingredient must be clearly labeled, but the rules in the U.S. are a little bit more lax. It's long been theorized that synthetic food dyes could contribute to hyperactivity, but more research is needed before it can be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. We're sure that many of you remember a rumor that circulated at one point that this ingredient could lower your sperm count. While there is zero evidence that this is true, two small studies on mice have shown that it does have that effect on mice. More testing is needed to determine if these findings hold up to greater scrutiny or apply to humans. Caramel Coloring Caramel coloring is one of the most popular food colorings in the entire world and is found in everything from soda to sweets to breads. 
It's even found in many types of seasoning and sauces, including barbecue sauce. You might assume that since it has the word caramel in it, that it's created by heating up sugar the same way that caramel is created. Well, not exactly. The process is called caramelization and involves heating carbohydrates, often in the presence of acids or alkalis. Some popular acids that are commonly used are sulfurous, phosphoric, and acetic acids. Those sound kind of horrible, so what about the alkalis? These can include ammonium or sodium. Okay, those definitely don't sound any more pleasant. There are various anti-foaming agents used as well, just to make sure the texture is correct. In particular, the caramel coloring produced using ammonia results in some chemicals that are thought to be harmful, and unfortunately, it's not labeled any differently than the others. This ingredient is even listed on the Centers for Science and Public Interest list of additives to avoid. Cellulose If you're like us, you probably believe that everything is better with a little sprinkle of cheese on top. Sure, taking the time to grate cheese yourself can be time-consuming, and we all know that washing a cheese grater is a nightmare, but it's the only way to be sure that your cheese doesn't come with an extra, unappealing ingredient. If you're sprinkling Parmesan or pre-shredded cheese on your food, you should know that it contains cellulose. This dietary fiber helps ensure that the cheese doesn't stick together and get clumpy, but the downside is that your body can't digest it at all. Oh, and it's made of wood pulp. Cellulose is made of virgin wood pulp that has been processed and it's considered safe for human consumption, even though, as we mentioned, you can't actually digest it. In addition to hiding in your cheese, it's also found in meat, ice cream, and a variety of other foods. How much cellulose is in your cheese? According to the FDA, 2-4% to is an acceptable amount, but independent tests have shown that certain manufacturers understate the amount of cellulose, and it can actually be as high as 8.8%. Energy Drinks a while ago, there was a frankly absurd rumor that the popular energy drink Red Bull contained a rather horrifying ingredient that would have come from a rather horrified bovine. We hate to break it to you, but not only does Red Bull not literally give you wings, it contains no animal products. The ingredient in question was known as taurine and was first found in the intestines and tissues of many animals. However, commercially used taurine is synthetically produced and does not come from any living creature. This doesn't mean that there is nothing secretive lurking in that energy drink can, however. Many energy drinks include guarana. We know that energy drinks are loaded with caffeine, but by adding guarana, a South American plant, companies can add some extra caffeine without having to admit it to the label. One single gram of guarana equals 40 milligrams of caffeine, so if an energy drink promises caffeine and guarana, it really just means caffeine and more caffeine. Energy drinks also contain massive amounts of sugar, and if that sugar is made with sugarcane, that means that it was processed with bone char, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's charred cow bones that help give sugarcane sugar that clean, bright white look. We knew there had to be an insidious secret to why their french fries tasted so good. McDonald's had to pay $10 million in a settlement because they fried their french fries in beef fat. Nowadays, they just flavor their fries with natural beef flavor, which is definitely not ambiguous at all. Hopefully, the next time you stop to grab some fast food, you'll think fondly of the richest and remember that time we ruined your favorite treat. While not all of these ingredients have the potential to be dangerous, some of them will sure change the way you look at food. Before you run out for a burger and fries, be sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel. Bye for now.